Mountaineer football was oh so close to success in 1995. Close to another winning season. Close to a 10th bowl appearance under coach Don Nealon. But it was quickly learned that this squad would have to battle more than just its opponents. Injuries decimated the team throughout the season. Frustration and disappointment were felt by all, as often the talented Mountaineers were their own worst enemy. Mixed in were a fair share of good moments and accomplishments. Enthusiasm also ran high, and the Mountaineers never quit. They hung together. But 1995 proved to be a year when the breaks went the other way. One less injury, turnover, or even an ounce more of luck could have made a difference in a season full of close encounters. The 1995 West Virginia University football highlights are presented by United National Bank. August drills brought the usual anticipation for the new season. Expectations ran high, fresh off an appearance in the Carquest Bowl and a 23rd place preseason ranking. A strong group of veterans returned on both offense and defense to fuel the optimism. The returning Letterman also seemed to make the transition easier for new coaches Desmond Robinson, Jerry Holmes, and Bill Lake. Big Ten opponent Purdue brought a challenge to look forward to in the opener, and the Mountaineers broke camp feeling good. After camp, I thought we had the best camp since I've been here in five years, and I, I had high expectations. I mean, I, after being named captain, I was thinking, God, this is going to be a great season. We're going to do this, this, and this. And The 1995 opener was different than most. In many ways, the Purdue game set the tone for the season. The problems of slow starts in the first half, mental mistakes, or the big comeback that fell just short, it all started against Purdue. Down 19 to nothing at the half, the Mountaineers staged a furious comeback led by 390 yards passing from Chad Johnston the third best passing effort ever at WVU. 138 yards rushing by Robert Walker. One hundred forty nine yards receiving by Lovett Purnell most ever for a WVU tight end. And one hundred thirty yards receiving by freshman David Saunders. Down 26-24, the Mountaineers dominated a tired Purdue defense and moved into position to win in the game's final second. But Brian Bauman's 26-yard field goal went wide right. The feeling of emptiness fell over a silent Mountaineer field. It was close, but still wide right. We were coming in with, uh, with really high expectations. And we played well the second half of the game, you know, and then ended up losing the game. But I, I really honestly don't believe that we ever fully recovered from that loss. We, we knew we should have won the game, and then just to lose it by that, that little couple of inches on that field goal, I mean, that, that really put a, a dagger in our hearts. West Virginia had plenty of frustration and took it out on the Temple Owls in week two. Not only was it the first win of the season, but an all-important Big East opening win. Here's the ball to Gary. Gary over the right side, cuts back into the end zone. Touchdown! Johnston had a solid day passing. Rashawn Vanderpool proved that he was WVU's go-to guy among the receivers. Henry Slay led the defensive effort. They flood the left side as a penalty marker is thrown. Pass is intercepted by Aaron Beasley. Burris finally drags him down across the 35-yard line. Lovett Purnell pulled in another touchdown. Here's Chad throwing downfield, and that's going to be a touchdown. No question about it. Pulled in by Lovett Purnell. End 
inside the five. Purnell slanting toward the top and corner. Beat the defensive back. No question about that whatsoever. After a loss at rain-soaked Maryland, where WVU could not overcome seven turnovers, the Mountaineers had something to prove against Kent. Two and two, West Virginia closed out September with what turned out to be a vital road matchup at East Carolina. Injuries were starting to take a toll at several positions. Even durable quarterback Chad Johnston was not immune. He suffered a sprained knee against the Pirates. Down 20 to three in the second quarter, backup quarterback Eric Boykin provided a much needed spark. And WVU tied the game at 20 early in the fourth. The comeback was there, but not the finishing touch. Missed opportunities and costly mistakes spelled the difference. Close, but still a painful 23 to 20 loss. An open week provided time to heal, heading into the Big East encounter at Boston College. October certainly started right for the Mountaineers. In an e-brace, Johnston threw for two touchdowns. Fullback Cantroy Barber rumbled. 
Purnell and Vanderpool continue to be the main guys through the air. The Mountaineer defense, led by ever-improving linebacker Bernard Russ, held the potent eagle attack to just 163 total yards, including a measly 15 yards rushing. Mike Logan made an inspirational return from a broken arm. Knute Curtis improved his stock as one of the bright young players in the Big East. And J.T. Thomas was solid once again in the middle. Emotions were the highest after the Boston College win. West Virginia was 2-0 in the Big East, heading into showdowns against Syracuse and Virginia Tech. Let's have a team that yeah! Great, 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 great job. Well, the Boston College game was really a rather weird game to a degree. It was probably our single finest performance. I thought we ran the ball with more authority. We threw the ball with great authority. And I thought our defense played a great football game. Uh, we won the game on the scoreboard, unfortunately. Uh, we ended up with about two sprained knees and two or three sprained ankles that never came back for us. Uh, John Browning had come back the week before, and he went down on the eighth play of the game. So, like I say, we won the game, but we kind of lost the war because the next two or three weeks we literally didn't have enough players to play up front offensively and it hurt us a great deal. Against the Orangemen and Hokies, the Mountaineers never got on track. Injuries riddled the offensive line, problems in the punting game kept the opposition in good field position. Jimmy Gary came close to changing the complexion of the game at Syracuse. Nothing went right against Tech. When the two showdowns were over, WVU had suffered its first back-to-back -back shutouts in 31 years. At three and five, the Mountaineers would have to win their remaining three games to reach a bowl. The run got off to a good start against Rutgers. This is Johnston, play actions and has time down the middle. It's the tight end, love it, Purnell, and Purnell will break West Virginia's scoring drought that had lasted for two weeks, a 49-yard touchdown reception. Fumble on the opening snap, Knute Curtis of West Virginia leaps on top of it, and the Mountaineers have taken the possession. Johnston fires sideline for the freshman, David Saunders in West Virginia, picks up the first out. Be a 25 yard attempt from Brian Bowden, and the kick is good. On first down, Ray Lucas rolls that pocket out and fires for Stephen Harper, who is wide open, and down the sideline goes Stephen Harper. Again on the ground, this is Jimmy Gary. Gary into the end zone for the touchdown. Lucas throwing on the run, and the pass intercepted by Aaron Beasley. His fifth pickoff of the season. And Beasley will keep it. He's out over the 50, headed out over the 40, to the 30. They finally catch him inside the 30. Saunders motions over to the left. The ball pitched back to Gary. Gary trying to go wide. He'll make it. He's in the end zone, standing up for a West Virginia touchdown. And the shotgun, and the snap back to Lucas. He's to the goal line. He's got a touchdown. Tossing it again to Jimmy Gary. And he's on his way in for his third touchdown of the quarter. Here goes Chad. Wide open. Sonner. Oh, oh, goodbye. Missing so long. Mountaineers blitz, pass complete to Stephen Harper. He scored one touchdown this afternoon. On his way to the end zone, touchdown Rutgers. Johnston going to fire it deep for Lovett Purnell. He scored one this afternoon, and he's going to score two. Lovett Purnell will go all the way, 76 yards for the touchdown, and Johnston fires his third touchdown strike of the afternoon. On third down and five, the play action. Johnston steps up wide open. Saunders touchdown. What 
watch out here. Here comes Leroy White. The fullback will go all the way. West Virginia wins it in convincing fashion. A final score of 59 to 26. During that game, I wanted to show that I wanted to really do well by this program. I think, um, like I said, this program did well by me. So I just wanted to come out in every game. I think that's what I did this year. West Virginia handed Miami its first Big East loss ever in 1993. And now the Mountaineers had a chance to be the first Big East team to win in the Orange Bowl. We had won big the week before. We had a lot of confidence going into the game. Every player on our football team felt that we would win that game. We went down there. We played well enough to win. We played hard enough to win. The Mountaineers outplayed the Hurricanes on both sides of the ball. A David Saunders touchdown. One hundred yards rushing from Jimmy Gary. And strong defensive play led by J.T. Thomas and Canute Curtis put the Mountaineers in position to win. However, in many ways, the Miami game was a microcosm of the entire season. Misfortunes countered good plays all season long. When Sean Foreman's touchdown was ruled no good, Chad Johnston countered with a fourth quarter 17 yard run on third and 16. Johnston, he's got open field ahead. He's going to go for it. He's got the first down. He needed 16 and he wow. went for 17. How do you like the junior from Peterstown, West Virginia? What a play. You know, I gave it all I had on that one play to get us to try to get that, that first down yardage. And, uh, and I know with, with the way I, my season went and uh, the ups and downs and the injury and all that, that, that kind of thing, you know, I, was really, I was really tickled to get that first down. Johnston's run kept the late scoring drive alive and put some fire in WVU's guttiest performance of the year. But when the Mountaineers failed to score late in the game, hopes for a bowl and the winning season faded away. In one of the toughest places to play in college football, the Mountaineers had played their hearts out. Although victory had been close at hand, it was still a 17-12 defeat. I had a great four years here. Went to, went to two bowl games and uh, almost won a national championship, so I can't complain. I, I'd rather take the wins. As like I said last year, I'd rather have the wins, and I just wish we had it this year to get to another bowl. At four and six, West Virginia was playing for pride when the Mountaineers battled the Pitt Panthers on Thanksgiving weekend in the backyard brawl. The stingy Mountaineer defense led by John Browning collected its first shutout of the season. The Mountaineer offense was all business in a 21 to nothing win. Backyard brawl left a good feeling with all Mountaineers. For the first time in Mountaineer history, WVU gained a fourth straight win over arch rival Pitt. The Pitt game proved that this team kept fighting. It's easy to go out there and win and stay, stick together, but it's hard. It takes a real man to go out there and lose week in and week out and stay, stay together as a team. You can't just count us out, you know. We came back and played good ball, you know. Unfortunately, um, a point here, a point there, or a situation here or there um, stopped us from going to a bowl game or um, not making that season as good as it should have been. But uh, it, it showed, I think our team showed a lot of character. Um, we um, showed that we could play uh, with um, adversity. You know, even though the outcome of the game didn't come go our way all the time. We showed that we never gave up. We always played to the fourth quarter and we were just persisting on not giving up. No, the 95 Mountaineers did not quit. That's a tribute to some key seniors who kept the fight alive. 
Seniors like Aaron Beasley, who finished his career second all-time in WVU interceptions, first in pass deflection, and a first-team All-American. In the backfield, senior Robert Walker fought a bad ankle for two seasons and fell just 29 yards short of being WVU's all-time leading rusher. He will be remembered for the blazing speed that helped him compile the greatest single season of rushing ever for a Mountaineer. His partner in the backfield was Jimmy Gary, who was the perfect complement. Gary ran hard and always gave his best. Along the offensive line, senior captains Buddy Hager and Lovett Purnell had the tough task of keeping the group together through injury. Hager bled gold and blue and was as tough as they come. Purnell proved to be one of WVU's best tight ends ever. He constantly pulled in clutch reception. And then there's senior linebacker J.T. Thomas. A gentleman off the field, he led the team in tackles for two straight years and was the defensive unit's heart and soul. These senior standouts led a team that would not give up and helped set a positive tone for the future. I always say that it, the way to come back is uh, through senior leadership, and I think we had some great seniors this year. We just stale it and get it done. We had great senior leadership, and I think if there's any positive, I think we need leaders and, and, and people to tell other people to keep their heads up, and, and we had that, and I think uh, we're just going to copy up the guys from last year to next year. The Mountaineers return a wealth of talent in 1996. These performers will have to relight the torch of leadership. Returners like quarterback Chad Johnston will look to restore the proud winning tradition. Johnston has passed for nearly 4,000 yards and 31 touchdowns in two years. He was not satisfied with the season and will be a determined performer. We didn't win ball games, and I think uh, there's not really any point that I can, I can really say that I was really satisfied with everything because we didn't win, and that, that's the bottom line to me. Johnston won't have to carry the load alone. Among the receivers, Rashawn Vanderpool does it all for the Mountaineers. A great receiver, kickoff and punt return specialist, Vanderpool is poised for an outstanding campaign. And so is David Saunders. Twice pulling in more than 100 yards receiving, Saunders ended up as WVU's all-time leading freshman receiver. Many young performers grew up in a hurry along the offensive line. The injuries of 95 led to game experience among the youngsters. On defense, Knut Curtis is a shining star ready to terrorize opposing quarterbacks. Curtis totaled 10 sacks in 95 and is currently fourth on WVU's all-time sack list. When healthy, tackle Henry Slay proved to be a dominant player. Slay will anchor the defensive front, which has plenty of young stars. At times, linebacker Bernard Russ was a man among boys. The Mountaineer defense was at its best when Russ was on the field. He too looks forward to a much expanded role next year. And in the WVU secondary, all return except for Beasley. Mike Logan, Charles Emanuel, and Van Washington once again will give West Virginia one of the strongest secondaries in the Big East. Next year, the 96 season, there's no question about it. Uh, at certain areas, this team will be as good or better than any that I've coached here. Uh, there's still some areas that we have major, major concerns with, but when you look at our wide receivers, I think you're going to look at at least three or four big league football players. I think we'll run well, we'll run well to the ball, and I don't have any idea what our win-loss record will be in 96, but we'll be competitive with everyone. As for 1995, the record books will only show a 5-6 and six record and not the painful lessons learned. Injuries did play a key role in the final mark, but so did some costly mistakes that now provide the learning curve for future success. This was a good and talented football team that lost three games by five points or less. That proved to be too much to overcome in this season full of close encounters. 
The 1995 West Virginia University football highlights have been presented by United National Bank. This has been a presentation of MSN, the Mountaineer Sports Network.